a blessed and wonderful midweek to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm so happy that we are here again to study the Word of God. By the way, I want to know how are you doing? I hope you're all doing great. I hope you're all doing fine. And I hope that we are all growing in our faith and in our relationship with God. Well, I know that for some, it's really very difficult right now. For some, they are struggling in so in many different ways. Some are struggling financially, physically, but overall, let us trust in the Lord because He knows what's best for us and He will be there to help us all throughout. Again, happy midweek to all of you. I'm so happy that you have joined me again in the study of the Word of God. If it's your first time to attend or to join us in this midweek Bible study, I'm inviting you to like our page so that you will be notified and at the same time, you will know if we have new videos that we have been uh, or we have been consistently posting videos. So by liking our page or following our page, you will be notified and you will know. And so that you will also not miss any single video that we are posting in this page. And for those who have been with us all throughout this study, again, my million thanks to all of you. Thank you for consistently joining us and thank you for sharing our videos and we are so happy that through this we can serve the Lord and not only that we can serve the Lord we can all grow in our faith and in our relationship with God so now brothers and sisters I'm inviting you to to share this video spread it to everyone so that all of them will have the opportunity to listen to the wonderful message that comes from the Word of God before anything else let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our great God, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the time that you've given us now. And as we begin in the study of the Word of God, we pray that the Holy Spirit will help us, will enlighten our hearts and our minds, and everything that we'll have here will help us to grow in our faith in you. Lord, be with us now. Open our hearts, open our minds, and help us to hear your message to all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've entitled the message uh, this midweek, The Search. Well, if you look at the internet now, I don't know what, what platform are you using. Maybe some of you are using Google, some of you are using Yahoo, Bing, or any, any other things. But in there, you can search for anything you want. And right away, if you have fast internet, automatically you will have the answer or you have the answers to the things that you are searching for. For example, if you're looking for a way, you know now, brothers and sisters, it's so easy right now. I can say, I can say that it's really easy right now because, for example, if you have an equipment that is not working and you need to troubleshoot it, you just need to type it and then suddenly there are so many solutions that will be provided to you. Even if, and, and, and sometimes there are even videos that will guide you step by step how to do it. So when you're searching for something, right now it's so easy. You just go to the internet and you will get the answers to the things that you are searching for. Well, for some, some are looking for happiness. Well, sad to say, the internet cannot give you that. Well, I, I think some will say, well, no, you're wrong, pastor. Somehow with the internet, I, 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 it helped me to be happy in this life. Well, it will provide you a little happiness but the the happiness that is never an ending you cannot find it in the internet well some are looking for their purpose in life they don't know what to do they don't know where to go they don't know their mission in life and they are looking for purpose they are searching for their purpose well some are searching for adventures they try to look at uh the internet or not just in the internet they try to look at some of the bloggers and you will see and you will learn there the wonderful places that you can visit wonder pla wonderful places that you can you can go but sad to say right now it's not easy to do that because of the pandemic well some are also looking for directions in life some are so confused they don't know what to do or some are traveling and they need directions so that they can reach where they are supposed to go so 
some are searching and some are also searching for the love of their lives all right so maybe some of you you are you are you have tried to search for for the love of your life you went through a lot of places you went through a lot of social media platforms just to search for the love of your life i remember one time there was this guy I, a church member who told me oh pastor i finally found the one i praise god that we have this site and when i visited that site that's the time or that's the moment that i i i was introduced to her and by god's grace i'm i, I want to share with you the news that we are happily married well some are searching for the love of their life well in the bible if you look at the story of matthew chapter 2 you will find there the story of the wise men and in there you will see that they were also searching well i don't know but during their time it's possible that people were also searching for answers People were also searching for happiness. People were also searching for the love of their lives. People were also searching for purpose. People were also searching for directions. And, and I like the story in Matthew chapter 2 because in here, the wise men, they were not just searching for these things, but they were searching for the Messiah. Well, I guess many of you are familiar with the story of Matthew chapter 2 in which it says there that there, there were wise men and they were searching for the Messiah or they were searching for Jesus Christ. Let's begin by reading Matthew chapter 2 verse 1 and it says, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star, and when it rose, and have come to worship him. So brothers and sisters, as you can see here, the wise men, they were searching for the Messiah. They were searching for Jesus Christ. And you know, there are so many suggestions uh, as to who are these people. Well, some are saying that the Magis or the Magi, they were... Uh, they were uh, kings in the far place, in a far place. But there, here are four suggestions that I've, ca I've come across while I was studying this text. It says that Magai has four general meanings according to G. Dealing. And he said, one could be that they were members of a Persian priestly class. Number two, they were possessors of supernatural knowledge and power. Number three, they were magicians. And number four, it could be, according to this, is that they were deceivers or seducers. But brothers and sisters, in these four suggestions, it's possible that it's referring to the number one, they were kings, they were wise men, they were people with authority, and they have come to worship Jesus Christ. And as you can see, according to the text, they came from the East. According to verse, verse 1, the wise men came from the east, and if you look at the if, and if you look at the the geography or the the map during their time, of course, right now you have cars, but during their time, it's possible that they were only using camels to travel. And according to one who studied this, that if if the east was referring to Babylon, it means that it is nine hundred miles from Babylon going to. Bethlehem and if they are going to travel 17 to 23 miles per day according to this uh, according to this scholar it could be that they will reach Bethlehem in 120 days of walk imagine that brothers and sisters if this is true it means brothers and sisters that the the magi or the wise men were really very committed into seeing our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's why, according to the text, it says that they were traveling from the east. And the reason why they were traveling from the east, according to verse 2, is that we have come to worship Him. 
brothers and sisters, people are searching for so many things. But in here, in this story, we see the wise men, they were not searching for for the things or the material things of this world. They were searching for the Messiah. And according to the text, they were searching for the reason that they want to worship Him. They want to worship Him. They want to give Him all the praise, all the glory that they can give to Jesus Christ. So brothers and sisters, for my three points in our study today, I just want to share with you three letter G's in our search for for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, or in their search, the search of the wise men for Jesus Christ, there are three things that we can learn from them. Number one, I put here, brothers and sisters, they traveled 120 miles, or 120 days, about 900 miles. And I put here, brothers and sisters, because of their desire, because of their search for Jesus Christ, they were willing to give up. They were willing to give up something just to see Jesus Christ. I, I can imagine if this were, or if they were, were leaders, or they were kings, or maybe they were people of authority in their places. It could be that they are living in a very comfortable house. They are living in a place in which you can say that it's really a place of comfort, a place in which they will feel that they are, they are important. It could be, if, 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 if it's today, it could be that this house, it has air conditioning, you have good bed, you have good bathroom. It could be like that, brothers and sisters. So based on my imagination, but because of their desire to see Jesus Christ, imagine they walk for 120 days just to see Jesus Christ. They were willing to give up their comfort zone. They were willing to give up the, you know, you see sometimes when you are so tired, you have this couch in your house, you just want to sit there, you just want to lie down, you just want to take a rest. No, brothers and sisters, because of their desire to see Jesus Christ, they walk for 120 days. Not only that, it's possible that they have also given up some of their businesses. If they are people of authority, if they were businessmen, well, brothers and sisters, they have given it up just for the sake of seeing Jesus Christ, our Savior. So, brothers and sisters, in my reflections, as I read this story, it tells me that those who really want to see Jesus Christ, those who really want to be close to Jesus Christ, will give up something in order for us to be close to Him, in order for us to see Him, in order for us to experience Him. So the question that I have for all of you brothers and sisters, what is it that we should give up so that we can experience Him in this life? Well, it could be, brothers and sisters, that we need to give up some of our time that we are, we are using when it comes to our social media. Maybe sometimes we are too busy with our social media. We have no time to read our Bibles. We need to give up that so that we can know Him. Maybe some are too busy with their businesses, online businesses. Well, I'm not saying that you need to surrender it all. I'm not saying that you need to quit your job. I'm not saying that what I'm trying to say here is that we need to prioritize Him. We need to love Him more than anything else. And in loving Him more than anything else, it tells us that, that we should spend time with the Lord. No wonder in the Bible it always says that we are to love God more than anything else. Because when we love Him more than anything else, the Bible says, that all things will be provided for us because Jesus cares for us. Jesus loves us. So brothers and sisters, the question may be that we can ask ourselves, how much do we want to see Jesus? How much are we willing to give up so that we can see him. People today are searching for so many things. People today are searching for their for for looking looking for jobs. 
people today are looking for for money because of this pandemic we have been affected people today are looking for so many things people are looking for happiness people people are looking for for comfort well today people are trying to look for a cure so that this COVID-19 will end. But above all, brothers and sisters, more than that, it's all important. But remember this, Jesus is far more important. And so, brothers and sisters, the story of the wise men reminds me that in order for us to, or if we really want to see Him, we will give up something just like what the wise men did. So the question is, how much can we sacrifice? How much can we give up so that we can experience our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ? And you know what, brothers and sisters, if we continue reading the story, you will know that it's really powerful and it's really a, a, a wonderful testimony once we have come to the knowledge or once we have come to realize that Jesus really is our ultimate treasury here on this earth. Let's look at, let's look at verse 3. Let's study these verses. It says, When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. And they told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for it is written by the prophet, O you Bethlehem in the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who shall shepherd my people Israel. So as you can see in this text, Herod was troubled. Herod was troubled because he's looking at Jesus Christ or he's looking at the news that was given by the wise men as a threat to his kingly power. He's thinking that this could be the one that, could, that will overthrow my power. And so he was troubled and all Jerusalem was troubled by the news of the wise men that they have come to see the king of the Jews. They have come to see the Messiah. And so... What Herod did, if you look at verse 7, it says, Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. So as you can see, we have two kinds of people here. We have the wise men who have come to search for Jesus Christ and they really want to worship him. And in here we have Herod. He told the, the wise men, go and search for him so that I may worship him. But we all know, brothers and sisters, that in this story, it's not really worship that Herod wants to do. He wants to kill the Messiah. He wants to kill Jesus Christ, because he looks at Jesus Christ, or he looks at the Messiah, he looks at the news as a threat to his power. So brothers and sisters, I, in my realization here, it's easy to say that we want to worship the Lord. It's easy to say that we want to prioritize the Lord. It's easy to say that we want to see Jesus. It's easy to say all those things. But in reality, the story of Herod tells us that we can say that. But the question is, is it reflecting? Will it reflect in our actions? I remember preaching in, in one of the prisons in Manila. And I asked this question, who among you here wants to go here? And no one would raise their hands. Of course, they don't want to be in jail. But, the next question is, how come you are here? Well, for some, they have been blamed or they, have been, they are victims. Maybe some of them have been, uh, it's a, it's a, a mis misinformation. The judgment was not right. It's possible that it's like that or some of them, they were just blamed or they were framed. But brothers and sisters, many of those who are there, they have committed mistakes. They have done something wrong. They don't want to go there, but their actions 
says that they want to go there. And in the same way, people are saying we want to know Jesus Christ, we want to see Jesus Christ. But the question is, what is it that we are doing? What is it that we are doing so that we can see our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ? And if we continue reading in verse 9, it says, After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Brothers and sisters, they were willing, the first G that I want to share with you, that I shared with you, they were willing to give up so that they can see Jesus Christ. They were willing to give up something. And number two, when they saw the star, they were filled with the second point, they were filled with gladness. You know what's interesting in this story, brothers and sisters? It's just the star that they saw but they were already rejoicing. Why? Because they know that the star will point to Jesus Christ. It will lead them to Jesus Christ. So imagine they just saw the star and they were already very happy. I, I, I can imagine that they were jumping. They were rejoicing. They were singing. They were, they were shouting at the top of their voice because they were so happy that finally they can see Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, when was the last time that you rejoiced exceedingly with great joy? When was the last time that you were so happy that you jumped at the top of you you jumped and you shouted at the top of your voice because you were so happy? I remember one experience that I had that I was filled with exceeding joy. Well, of course, seeing or or knowing Jesus Christ, when I was baptized, it was one of the happiest moments of my life. When, when I have accepted Jesus Christ, when I have known Him. But, you know, in this earthly life, there are things that will give us joy as well. You know, one thing, one, 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 one experience that I had was one day, my member called me and told me, Pastor, Pastor, you have been pastoring, or you have been pastoring our church. You have been with me for six years, and now I want to treat you. I want to send you to Israel for free, all expense paid. And you know what, brothers and sisters? When she said that, when when she hung the the phone, I put my phone also down, and I started shouting. I started jumping at the top. I sh shouted, shouting at the top of my voice. I started jumping, and I was so happy. And I was even lying down on the floor. I said, "Oh, praise the Lord! Praise the Lord!" And you know what? I didn't know that there was someone who was looking at me. And then suddenly, the lady came to me, and and she said, "Sir." Are you crazy? <laughs> crazy? Because I was so happy with that news. And, uh, and you know, brothers and sisters, one day, my, my, my son, I had the opportunity to witness and to capture using our camera his great joy when he received his first car. Just imagine my son at a very young age, the, 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 uh, uh, his grandparents gave him his first car and this is his picture look at how look how happy he was when he received that gift he was so happy and not only that he was so happy you know i have this video that he was cleaning the car every day you know brothers and sisters because he saw me cleaning my car he was also cleaning his car so he was imagining that there's a a a, a water so and he was trying to clean the car. Brothers and sisters, he was so happy with it. Well, people are also so happy when there are news about sale, you know, today we can go to the mall, but online you can see that there are so many, uh, many promos, many advertisements saying, oh, it will be sale. There was sale on this date, on that date. Brothers and sisters, all of this will give us happiness, but this happiness will never last. This happiness will only 
be there for a short time. But the happiness that comes from the Lord, the gladness that we can experience from the Lord, it will always be there. It is the joy that will sustain us when all the material blessings are gone. It's the joy that will sustain us when all the people around us, we cannot... We can, when, when there are no people around us to support us, to help us, it's the joy of knowing Jesus Christ that will give us happiness, peace, and love in this world. And no wonder, brothers and sisters, when the, when the wise men saw the star, they were filled with joy. They were filled with exceeding gladness because it points to, the, to Jesus Christ, and finally they will see Him. Brothers and sisters, there's great joy in the Lord. No wonder in the experience of Paul, he was, the, he was a persecutor before, and then he became an apostle. He was preaching to the Philippians, and he said, compared to Jesus Christ, everything here on earth can be considered garbage. It is only in Him we can find through joy, through happiness. No wonder they were willing, the wise men, they were willing to leave their comfort zones. They were willing to give up thanks just to see Jesus Christ because in seeing Jesus Christ, there's great joy. There's great joy in their hearts. There's great joy in their countenance. There's great joy in their faces. Brothers and sisters, let me ask you, where are you looking when you, when you want to experience joy? You may be looking at the wrong direction. You may be looking at things of this world and that's why you are not so happy. But in order for you to experience true joy, look to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do not forget, if we read in advance the story, don't forget that Jesus Christ died on the cross. He died on the cross for you and for me. He died on the cross so that we will all have the assurance of salvation. What we need to do right now is to have that, that willingness to know Him. Brothers and sisters, He already made the first step. He is reaching out to us. He wants us to experience gladness. He wants us to experience happiness in this life. So brothers and sisters, just like the wise men, let us see, let us try to give up things. Let us search for Him in our daily experiences. Let us know Him because in knowing Him, there is great joy and the last g that i want to share with you brothers and sisters not only that they were willing to give up things not only that they experience gladness exceeding joy in seeing jesus christ but they also brought gifts this is the last letter g they brought gifts to our lord and savior jesus christ look at verse 11 it says, And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. And opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Brothers and sisters, the, what they gave to Jesus Christ, were not just ordinary gifts. It was gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And according to one study, according to one book that I read, these are all gifts that is being given to kings, to people of authority. So these are not ordinary gifts that they have given to our, the Messiah, to Jesus Christ. They have given the best gift that they can give to him. So the question that we can ask ourselves right now, what can we give to the Lord? What can we give to Jesus Christ? Well, in reality, brothers and sisters, when we talk about salvation, we cannot give Him anything. When we talk about salvation, there's nothing that we can do. There's nothing that can add to what Jesus Christ did for us. It's already a done deal. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ is already enough. The sacrifice of Jesus is enough for all of us. 
But as we grow in our faith in Him, as we continue to grow in our knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as we continue to grow in our love for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is slowly, brothers and sisters, there are things that we can give up. There are things that we can give to Him, that we can surrender to Him, that we can give to Him as our gift. Because everything that we have here on this earth, brothers and sisters, it is God's gift to us. If not because of Jesus Christ, if not because of Him, we won't have anything in this world world again when it comes to salvation there's nothing that we can add there's nothing that we can give to him but as we have faith in him as we grow in our knowledge of him as we grow in our love for him we will start to learn to be like the wise men and they gave not just an ordinary gift they gave the best for him brothers and sisters what is it that we can give to God. I look at the writings of Ellen White from the book Steps to Christ and she said, the best thing that we can give to God is our unclean heart so that God can clean it and God can forgive us our sins. Brothers and sisters, the story of the, the, the wise men reminds me that they were, they, they were very committed. They want to worship the Lord. And because of their desire to worship the Lord, they give up their comfort zones. Not only that, they experience true gladness in their search for Jesus Christ. And, and lastly, they, gave, they, they have given gifts, gifts that is not ordinary, they have given the best gifts for the Lord. So the question that we can ask ourselves now, how much do we want to know Him? How much do we want to experience Him? Because in experiencing Him, brothers and sisters, in knowing Him, in our desire to worship Him, we can also do what the wise men did. They give up, they experience gladness, and they gave gifts to Jesus Christ. I pray and I hope that as we continue to search for happiness, to search for joy, to search for opportunities, to search for so many things, we will not miss the search, the most important search that we should be doing each day, and that is to search Him, to know Him, to grow in Him, to love Him, because in doing so, Brothers and sisters, the Bible says, Jesus promised all things will be added unto us. May God bless you. I hope you were blessed by the message that we studied. And may it be that all of us will be like the wise men. We will have the heart to really worship God, to know God. And when we do, we will learn to give up things. We will experience through gladness that we cannot compare. And lastly, we'll be able to learn to give gifts to Him, recognizing that everything that we have here is really coming from Him. May God bless you. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our great God, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the message that you have shared or that you have taught us. May we be reminded always, dear God, that our search for happiness in this world, Lord, it will sometimes fail us because the things of this world, it's temporary. But Lord, our search or in our, as we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of you, we will learn that true happiness and gladness really will just come from you. So I pray for my brothers and sisters. May we learn from the story of the wise men. Give us the heart, Lord. Give us the desire to really worship God, to really worship Him, to know Him, to love Him. And I pray, Lord, that as, uh, in the same way that they have searched for Jesus Christ, we will also do it 
daily. We will do it in our lives. We will find ways to know you and to grow in our knowledge, in our faith, in you. Lord, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. There's nothing we can add to what he did. There's nothing that we can do for us to be saved because it's only Jesus Christ who can really save us. And we thank you for Jesus Christ who did it all for us. Help us, Lord, to to trust in him. Help us to trust in you. Help us to love you. And in loving you, dear God, may we grow May we be changed from glory to glory. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray.